All right, so one of the cooler things that uh, Xcode 5 now has is the ability to create its own uh, particle um, emitters. And what we'll do is go over here to New File. And there it is, Sprite Kit Particle File. So this is a, well, you can find it in two places under here, iOS or OS uh, X. Let's get the iOS one. It should be the same though. And uh, Sprite Kit Particle File. Click on Next. And let's see. I'm going to choose the, uh, the Spark one here. And I will just call it um, Spark. Check that off. And I'm going to make sure I am inside of uh, all my other, where my other resources are at. I kind of made that mistake before and I wasn't happy with it where it got placed by default and whoa look at that thing going um, uh, alright so what's going on here it's using this uh, spark.png file and it is using that right here particle texture uh, one kinda cool thing is you can flip out and um, or flip to another file and I don't know if you can tell but that is actually using one of the still frames from the uh, the character and uh, yeah, look at all these different options you have every one of these files that we've imported in you could potentially use but uh, let's go back and go with the, oh I just gotta see the blob well you can't really tell can you alright so spark and uh, let's tone this down a little bit uh, maybe let's go with the hundred for now okay uh, I'm going to try to get these back to the uh, the settings that I kind of preferred and the position range I knocked this down to about 1.5 okay and uh, you can see that it's um, there's less variance in terms of the uh, kind of the center point of where these uh, these particles are starting from so use 1.5 there and uh, the speed Let's start these at um, 200, or some of them at 200. A range would be up to 500. And then, let's see, the alpha I left alone. The, let me uh, move this out of the way. The scale, I uh, started these at uh, 0.2. And by the way, feel free to just change these uh, however you want. So, no right or wrong here. And uh, then for the rotation, I didn't uh, touch that at all. And actually, this is pretty much exactly what I um, had in my uh, version of the kit. Uh, of course, you can change the color if you want, uh, do all that fun stuff, and change the blend mode to all sorts of crazy things. But uh, let's go with this for right now. And again, uh, notice that I've got the uh, uh, the particles to emit uh, set down to 15. So I think what that's going to override is. Uh, the, um, the particles over here. All right, so we'll just do a few of them, something like that, right? And I don't want to have a too crazy of an effect. You might want that, but uh, I kind of just wanted to look like the sword is hitting the ground, uh, at least for the main character, and it's kind of making a little bit of a spark uh, occur. So in our uh, attack method, which is right down here. We're going to put in an if statement uh, to see if we actually need to uh, use the particles. And I'm going to say if use attack particles and obviously we haven't set up this boolean variable yet. So we're going to have to do that. Equals yes and uh, this is an option that uh, you can go with or, or decide not to go with. But I'm going to say if the current direction equals no direction, or does, I should say does not equal no direction. And what that means is that uh, you're going to have to be moving around to attack. All right, so let's go ahead and set up this Boolean variable. I'm going to dive up here to the top of the file. And we'll just put it down here. Bool. Might as well keep all of our boolean variables together. Put that down there. All right, and uh, use attack particles. That's particles. Just put 
put that right there equals this just change that to a capital U and uh, it should solve our little issue oh sorry plural all right and then we're gonna call a method self perform selector at selector and I'm writing it like this because I want to add a uh, little bit of a delay in here uh, so we'll just go ahead and name this uh, method add emitter as in particle emitter with object we don't need an object passed into it but we do want a possible delay so we're gonna call this variable particle delay and that's gonna be yet another one we need to go set up here to the top this will um, this comes in from the this property right here it's a number and a decimal number is uh, definitely what we want because we want kind of like fractions of a second so let's go over and uh, make sure that that is going to be a float variable so float particle delay copy that and we'll set this down here by the way um, during the break I did actually uh, change my speed variable to be a, a float value kind of talked about that before but I don't think I actually did it on screen all right particle de de delay and uh, while we're down here let's go ahead and uh, define the uh, or create a variable for the number of particles that we are going to emit that'll be uh, particles to emit this will equal particles to emit this will be an integer value I don't think we can do partial particles can we and come back up here do we have any other ints up here don't think so okay now let's go write that uh, add emitter statement okay the only warning we're getting here is this okay yeah Yeah, give us a little bit more room here. All right, uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, create an ns string, which is going to be our emitter path, or basically just the path to our um, spark.sks file, that guy right there. And this is going to be equal to ns bundle, our main bundle of resources and then we write path for resource and for this we're going to replace that with our character data and then object for key that's going to be our particle file and then of type we just put in here SKS so be sure that you don't ever put in um, for your attack particle file dot sks over here all right and by the way you know uh, maybe I should have put the, called this something like my spark or CS spark uh, you don't necessarily have to have the same name as the um, you know whatever image file you're working with or the type of the uh, of the spark I mean of the particle so uh, back down here now we're gonna write uh, sk emitter node this will be a popular class, I think. Equals ns keyed. Let's see, keyed. Uh, archi unarchiver, sorry. Not archiver. Unarchiver. And we are going to unarchive the object with file. And uh, what it's asking for here is, you guessed it, the emitter path. So it's basically just going to unarchive our SKS object, and uh, we're going to get to use it. Right, uh, 
well, not right now, in a moment. Uh, all right, now you get to decide uh, where you want the um, the Z position to be on this. So uh, let's say 150. It's just kind of an arbitrary number. Remember, our characters up are, at, are up at 100. So if you wanted to, wanted this to visually appear below them, um, set it uh, anything you know from 0 to 99. Uh, for right now, I'll just try it at a, a level above them. And uh, you could do emitter dot num particles to emit is going to equal uh, particles to emit that variable. And uh, from here, all you need to do is then just uh, add the child. So we're going to do self add child. And there's our emitter. All right, uh, what we need to account for uh, somewhere inside of here is um, the positioning of the uh, emitter because if it is at. Um, well, you'll see where it's at. It's just uh, at zero, 00, which is going to be right in the middle of the character. And you know, I'll go ahead and just begin publishing this. And a year and a half later, when it uh, actually runs, we can watch. Oh, no. Looks like it's starting to come up. It's going to start writing code here, but I'll, I'll give it a chance. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it'll, it'll, write, it'll be right in the center of the character. And um, what we can do is just offset that based on uh, what direction we're going up, down, left, or right, and um, we'll, uh, we'll decide that uh, based on the, the frame of the actual character. But, um, I, you know, I mean, I think that's a good enough solution. It's, uh, you know, not great. I mean, it, it kind of makes some assumptions that your sword or whatever would be attacking in the same place each time. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's good enough for now, I think. All right, so, um, hmm, that still looks like the... <laughs> That doesn't look like the spark one. That <laughs> looks like the smoke one. Yeah, and you know what's weird? I had the same problem before, where I, it, I think the simulator has just cached my SKS file. We might, uh, I don't know. We'll we'll figure that out. But uh, it is actually running here, and and as you can see, it just kind of emits from the, um, the center of the uh, the node. And uh, well, let's see if I can resolve my problem uh, during a break. Okay, it was a little bit of a simpler problem than that. I just had the wrong name in there. Oddly enough, what was happening, though, was uh, because it couldn't find this file, it decided to go and uh, use myparticle.sks. So it just kind of came up with a generic name, and uh, there you go. So <laughs> check your property list settings. All right, uh, switch current direction, and uh, we get to put in here case. This will be uh, it's up. In which case, we'll do something, and then break out of this. And let's go ahead and fill in our other ones. Well, you know, before I do a lot of copying and pasting, I might as well set up at least one of these. Emitter dot position. Uh, this is going to equal CG point make and if we're going up, we'll leave the uh, X position alone. And then we'll just take the uh, character dot frame dot size dot height uh, divided by two. So we're just adding this amount. And close that off. So that'll just bump up the emitter to the basically just the top of the frame, right? Starting from the middle. Okay, the zero zero is at the middle, so just taking half of the frame height and moving the emitter up by that. Okay, and the other ones will just kind of follow suit there. So this will be uh, down, and in which case we are going to subtract this. And let me just put that in uh, parentheses. Let's go right, left. And then we're just going to reverse these. So going uh, left actually will be the negative one. And going right will be the positive one, adding to that. And uh, if you want, you can just go ahead and throw in your default and just leave it at zero, zero. Oh, actually, you know what? It's not going to. I mean, you can leave that in if you want, but it's not going to matter because uh, zero zero is left unchanged anyway. Okay, so 
Uh, let's give it a shot now and uh, see what happens. And of course, what'll be fun is creating different uh, particle files for. Uh, oh, I gotta quit the simulator for each of the uh, the characters. If you ever get that springboard launch error, or whatever that is, just quit the simulator. Sometimes I feel like remember in that. The Batman movie with the Joker, whichever one was that, where he's hitting the button to the bomb that's going to blow up the hospital, and he has to hit it a few times and shake it. That's what I feel like most of the time I'm testing with the simulator. All right, and sure enough, there we go. Boom. Not too bad, right? Pretty cool. It's, uh, it's a little offset on this one right here, but uh, for the most part, I think it works.